on salvage hunters. Drew does battle with a reluctant seller. 250 for a knackered, beaten up, <laughs> ripped, falling to bits poster. 250 pounds. Talks cars with a Cornish collector. Oh, wow. How nerdy am I? I was so nerdy in Volkswagen. <laughs> he lets off steam on an Anglesey farmyard <laughs> and uncovers a forgotten treasure at a Somerset school. Oh, yeah, wow. It's incredible. Drew Pritchard is one of Britain's leading decorative salvage dealers. Oh, it gets even better. Wow, nice original frame, no rot. He scours the country in search of weird and wonderful objects. Boom! Now that I would like to buy. He'll even venture abroad into uncharted territory. My family started this farm 1,200 years ago. 1,200 years ago? There's nothing he won't buy. They're in great shape, aren't they? With help from his wife, Rebecca, and a team of renovators, he transforms thousands of items from junk to gems. It's Monday morning in Conwy, North Wales, and salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is preparing to hit the road. This week, he's visiting several antique collectors who could present Drew with a unique set of challenges. Collectors often have the best stuff, but it's very difficult getting them to part with it. A lot of these collections are fantastic, but not the sort of thing I can sell to my clients. But the challenge with any collector is getting them to sell you something. Drew and his restorer, Gavin, are heading down to Long Rock, near Penzance in Cornwall, to visit dealer and collector Joe Gray. I've never been this old before. Have you never? Really? I've got my passport here. <laughs> the guy that, that we're seeing is called Joe. He's taken over from his father. I'm Joe Gray. This is Shiver Me Timbers in Long Rock, Penzance. We deal in timber and restore furniture and architectural antiques, etc., and anything odd and strange. Now, I'm looking forward to seeing this because it's the sort of yard and the sort of place they're stuck so far out, they're not going to get harassed by traders all the time. So the chance of them having something sitting around, not doing anything, is high. Ah, this has got to be the place. Look, there's a pirate stuck on top of a building. <laughs> Shiver me timbers. Arr! <laughs> Joe. Hello. Go right there. Drew, how are you doing? Hello, how nice you? to meet you. Hello. First impression seeing the, the yard as you drive up, it's just nuts. Where do we start? Well, <laughs> we've, got, we've got the shed here. Come and have a look in here if you like. Cool. Blimey. I like it already. It's wonderful. <laughs> There's just not enough places like this around anymore. So just been left. You see for sale, is it? Most of it. <laughs> Joe trades in antiques, but also has a significant collection of his own, some which he stores in his shop. Yeah. It's good that you've hung all the stuff I like off the ceiling. Yeah, just out of reach. Yeah. <laughs> that there. The resuscitation dummy. Yes. The little 50s one. Yeah. He's, um, <laughs> he might be one of the things that might not be for sale. <laughs> oh, F come on, everything's for sale. Let's get him down and have a look I at it. I might him. even have the suitcase that he came in. And then Is that the suitcase, the suitcase there? No. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, that's that definitely could, that's, it. That could that's, be it. That's definitely <laughs> the one. <laughs> well, it's going to be a long day. <laughs> this is a 1950s German CPR mannequin used for first aid training. Intact, they can retail for around £250. His name's John. <laughs> so it's this, it's the head that I like, all this That's bit. That's the best bit. Just from there, right? Yeah. I've had him for quite a while. And when I got it down, I thought, well, actually, it's only the head that I like, and then you could see Joe had a, an attraction to it. Uh, he really liked it. Well, I don't want to separate you from, you know, obviously, somebody <laughs> you're quite attached to. <laughs> He's in the trade. He knows that if he wants to sell something, he'll sell it, and if he doesn't want to sell it, there's no point in really pushing him too far, I suppose. <laughs> Blimey. OK, so where's next, then? Um, oh, what's that? I like this, Joe. Yeah, it's a nice one. Yeah. yeah. Especially with those cogs on, it's a bit more unusual than... It the, is, yeah. yeah, I like the condition it's in as well. This 1930s machinist's lamp would have been fixed in a workshop above a piece of equipment. Rewired, it could sell for around £250. How much is that? 
Well, I'll make us an offer on it. No, come on, it's your <laughs> shop. This is your shop. Is this my shop or your shop? <laughs> come on, don't try that on Mark, with me. Don't try that on. Come well, on. you know, I could... It's you could, the, but it's yeah, the... yeah, I could do this. Come on, how much is it? If I told you a price, you'd be tempted. Um, that's the plan. That's what, that's what you want. <laughs> <laughs> come on. I like it. Well, I don't, you know, what your market is, I don't know if you, you're going to make on it. I don't want to, you know, give you a price that you can't make on it, but, I mean... That's a starting point. Just give us a price. 250 No. <laughs> well, give well, us another what, price. What's your <laughs> price, then? <laughs> okay, I've had my go. Um, 150 Can we meet somewhere in the middle? 160 My maths is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> 180 We'll shake on it. 180 Lovely, lovely. First purchase out of the way. <laughs> See, that wasn't too painful. Oh, come over all faint. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the lamp. It's the first deal out of the way. That's great, because Joe's now gone from a not-selling frame of mind to a selling frame of mind. Now all of the deals will be much easier from now on. Well, I hope so. We've got some metal letters up there, Joe. How about we start at £10 each? Um, if I bought them all. I think there's seven. 70 quid. Mm, I'd be probably happier with a one -er. Let's get them down and have a look at them. We share a similar <laughs> aesthetic, don't we? We like the same things. These aluminium shop letters are a good find and require little more than a clean. They could sell for around £45 a piece. 100 quid. Is that what you said? You happy with that? Yeah. Deal. Lovely. Thank you. Another decent purchase for Drew. A few more things in Joe's shed quickly catch his eye. Ejection seat. Royal Canadian Air Force and United States Air Force military aircraft. It's fitted with a seat catapult gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a seat I want to sit in. These Cold War era military training posters demonstrate the preparations for a possible nuclear attack. Depending on size and subject, they can sell for around £50 each. How much is the batch? 80 quid. 80 quid. One, two, three, four, five. Probably still room to move on that, isn't it? Six. Um, 60 quid. Love those. Wonderful. They're just crackers, aren't they? Have you got, any, are. more, have you got any more sort of, of that? I've got, I've got a couple more that I was keeping for myself. <laughs> Can I see those ones? <laughs> you may see them, but they're, they're ones that I've had in my personal collection for... <laughs> Uh, I'd like to see your personal collection. <laughs> <laughs> They're the ones I really want to see. If it's not for sale, it means it's really a bit special. He's a dealer, he knows, he knows what he's looking for. Oh, yes. Now you're talking. Oh, imagine it in your house with a very nice looking house. Nice little console table below it, light above. It's an art piece. I love that. It's just the colours and that. It's superb. I like the fact he's kept his tie on. <laughs> <laughs> he's a gentleman. <laughs> this St John Ambulance training poster is approximately 75 years old and, once reframed, could net around £500. How much? I'm not even going to bother asking this from a private collection, because it clearly is. You would have to twist my arm for that. Well, all of these have not really been on public display or for, for sale, per se. I've you... never seen this one before. No. Go on then, hit me with a price. Um, you never know. Uh, I'll, I'll give you the, the go-away price. <laughs> <laughs> um, 400 quid. I know 400 quid is the price because you just don't want to sell it. Yeah. But I would be happy to pay £150 for it, which is a big difference. Mm. But that's a realistic, like... Yeah, That's a course. realistic offer. I'm quite happy to keep that one. Can we come back to this? Oh, me. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I want it, it isn't for sale. I don't like things that aren't for sale. If I really want them, I really want them. After a surprisingly successful run, it seems that Drew's hit a brick wall. So Joe leads Drew and Gavin to his outbuildings, an area not open to the public. Fantastic, look at this lot. Oh, I like that. Shame the drawers are missing, look at that. Look at that, that's super. You don't know where the central drawer for that is, do you? Love this old sign writing on it. No, so sadly not. I love that. This is why I don't let punters in here, because they always want to buy the things that are full of all the nuts, up, nuts and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff you need. Yeah. Oh, God, look at that. Found 
Look, watch this, watch, 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 watch. I'm gonna jump in it. No, watch, 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 brace yourself. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's more circus props. Oh, right, yeah. Got a lot of time on your hands, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> What's in here? Uh, there's a couple of bits of uh, glass. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come here. Go on, stick your head in there. <laughs> I need to see something. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Happened to the last person who haggled too much. <laughs> I think we'll leave him in there. <laughs> That's quite horrible. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> OK, where's next? Uh, there's some more bits over here. This is a great place. You, your father's just imagination's just run wild, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. The next stop is the glass workshop, where former stained glass restorer Drew is in his element. Oh, blimey. That's nice. That's nice. I like this. And it needs one, two, two repairs, three repairs. Hmm. Fan lights are large windows often found above the doors of Georgian houses. This fan light, once restored, could retail for around seven hundred pounds. It's all down to price with this. How much is this, Joe? One hundred and fifty. Nice. Pig to repair. Must be that's your job, then, isn't it? Right, can you can you go a hundred? Meet you at one twenty. How's that? Sold. I'll okay. take it. Cool. <laughs> We're done. That's good. Done. I have been. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to repair this? This has to be me. I'm afraid. That's why oh, I was taking so nice. long to decide because <laughs> I was looking at it going, I can't give this to anybody else. I've got to do it. That means it'll go in the pile of stuff that's not getting done. <laughs> it's a good purchase, but Drew's not finished with Joe yet. He's determined to get one more item out of the reluctant seller. It is playing on my mind, that poster we saw. It's so odd. I'm going to have to go back and have another go at it. Joe's at £400. And you know what? It's worth, it's worth 400 quid. It's worth more than £400, but I've still got to buy it with a profit. I'm prepared to come up a little bit, and that's it because it's still, I know it is what it is, it's great, but everything's got a price. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I've got that, to see a profit and on that it. Is, yeah, that is my, um, that is my, my uh, go-away price, but, I mean, the best I can really do on it is going to be three. With three, I've got to frame it, which, and frame it well, it's going to cost 60 quid to do a proper job on it. Um, so I'm at 360 plus my time at 400 quid. I can't see enough in it. Oh, man. I'm going to re I'm trying at 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 225. Is that tempting you enough? I'm doesn't... buying quite a lot, aren't I? How much stuff have I bought? It's got to be it's a high hundreds, isn't it by now, I think. It doesn't it doesn't tempt me. Oh, that's really hard to step away from, isn't it? Oh, come on, 250. 250 <laughs> for a knackered, beaten up, <laughs> ripped, fall into bits poster. 250 pounds. 250 pounds. Yeah. Am I offering? Am I really offering two hundred and fifty pounds for that? There's got to be a profit in it for you for that. Yeah. There's a profit in it, but as I say, it's not tempting me. Two seven five, and you'd tempt me, and I'd, that'd be the bottom, bottom line. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Uh, one coming. of us was going to go away unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel slightly guilty going back and harassing, because I can tell he loves it. And I sort of set £200 in my mind. But then the more I looked at it the second time, I was like, I've got to own it. I've got to own it. Very good day. Thanks, Thank you, Joe. Cheers. Thanks, sir. Cheers. To come this far south, all the way down to Cornwall, right to the coast, to find a, a yard like this and to buy such a lot of unusual items that are very much my sort of thing is great. Over the moon, fantastic, particularly that poster. Okay. That's so cool. I'm out in the light. Where are we going to put these so they don't get damaged? They, they can't get damp. Really? <laughs> Overnight, we'll just put them in the, in the cow. Stick them in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. 
I haven't enjoyed one of them so much in ages. Absolutely super. Good, please. Do you know what we need to do now? Old English pub. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Pasties and a pint. <laughs> After a pint and a good night's sleep, Drew and Gavin are back on the Cornish salvage hunt. Today, they're going just up the road to visit a local collector in Hale. We're coming to see a guy called Chris Ryan, and he is a collector of vintage surfboards, skateboards, Americana cars. I somehow have a collection, oh, it's just a load of junk, but it's stuff that um, I see at the skip site and the car boot, and you know that it's going to be crushed, and I just think you've got to save it. He's a bit of a hoarder, but he's a hoarder of cool stuff, not just any old rubbish. So he's willing to sell some of them? Yeah, yeah, no, he's keen to sell, keen to sell. Well, that's good. Yeah. It's not all cars, is it? I can't buy a car this far down unless it's, like, you know, a sports luxury car, because I'm not driving, you know, for seven hours home. Well, the cars you buy wouldn't get back. <laughs> True. Here we are. Looks cool. That's some old. It's good, isn't it? You're not having one. Ah, hello. Chris. Yeah. Drew. Drew, hi, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice yeah, to meet you. Hi, Chris. And Gavin. Gavin. Nice to right meet you. On. Love your place. Oh, stuff. Living near the beach. <laughs> Are you a surfer? Uh, I can balance on <laughs> a piece of, piece of fiberglass. Yeah. Cool. That's a great shape, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Straight away, I see a beach buggy, and I was like, I know what that is. I can't believe how nerdy I am sometimes, but I know it's a Mark 1 GP short wheelbase on, a, on an early pan. It's in a bad way, that pan. Ah, uh, yes. That front beam is the giveaway. Mid-50s. Mid-50s. I'd beam. say so. Yeah. And then it's been stamped like that. See that stamp there? Ah, I mean, right. it's been back to the fa factory for rebuilding as well. Oh, How wow. nerdy am I? I was so nerdy in Volkswagen. <laughs> if I was to do Mastermind, right, specialist subject would hey. be Volkswagens. I was just totally, oh, totally... Once again, today we've come to a great place, but a few too many cars for me. Drew talking drivel again about cars, cars, cars. I loved them. Oh, fantastic. But it won't one. fit in the van, Drew. It would, actually. It wouldn't. If it you would. If you Take the body if you, off. If you put skinnier wheels on... Yeah. This is great, your surf shack. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So just whatever presents itself to <laughs> you. Yeah. Whatever gets washed up on the beach, yeah, just gets That's great. nailed on. Yeah. Next stop is the surf shack, which houses Chris's prized collection. Yeah, come in. Whoa, yeah. This old skateboards. This is the business. <gasps> wow. Yeah. yeah. Rolls Royce of skateboards. My in the word. 70s. That's the baby. That was the thing. That was the that was the daddy, and this began it all. This one here. Yeah, yeah. That's as it was. That's an old roller skate with steel wheels, just bolted to an old bit of wood. Skateboards originated in California in the 1950s, where surfers who wanted to try surfing the streets would strap roller skate wheels onto pieces of board to create crude skateboards. 100 years from now, that should be that's going to be in a museum, isn't it? It is. I mean, look at this. Yeah. The collection. Got, it's like yeah. the generations of them. So you've gone from. A guy just getting a bit of a floorboard through yeah. to this. Yeah. Which is like the hot rod beach buggy of, of them, exactly, of them all. Yeah. Skateboards are great. Uh, I had one, this guy's had loads of them, uh, but they're not the sort of thing my clientele want. Cool. Have you got any more places to see? Uh, yeah, 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 more, right. more stuff stored up there. I want to just lift the shed up and take it home. This place is so unusual, Chris. What is, what is this? Uh, that's what? my beach. Yeah. You, said it beach. Wasn't, you said it wasn't far. <laughs> no, 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 everyone should have their own beach. Yeah. Oh, really? A little bit of sand. You put your, yeah, take your shoes off. Yeah. Have your feet in the sand. Yeah. Shut your eyes. And you're there? Anywhere. South of France. California. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? You know, I think he's about 400 yards from the beach, but I want my own, so he's built his own beach. Look at that old mirror. That's probably seen better days. Yeah. I really like old distressed mirrors, but that's just is gone. Ah, that, oh, that's too yeah. far, is it? Yeah. Looks cool. I don't want to mess with your beach. That's really nice. Mm. I, I do don't feel worry. slightly more relaxed. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's great. This place is so cool. Uh-huh. What's that? It's a belly tank. Uh, possibly, yeah. It's funny, yeah. It's a fiberglass. Chris, again, fiberglass. does nothing else but surprise me. He's got... Well, what he's called it, the world's fastest Cornishman. He's built a sort of Bonneville-esque 
streamliner motorbike. It's just nuts. <laughs> you didn't actually go on this, did you? Yeah, yeah. No. Only in a test run like down the lane. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, at speeds approaching four miles an hour, five maybe. We're hoping to do a run on a on a beach at some point to break the Cornwall speed record. Which is? Um... At the moment, it's four miles an hour. <laughs> and that, that was me down the lane. Yeah. I think you'll do it. It's a fantastic show and tell at Chris Ryan's yard, but Drew's yet to see anything he could actually buy. Reluctant to leave empty-handed, Drew and Gavin take a last look around the yard. I like those. I like the lamps up there. Ah, uh, yeah. You want me to grab one down for you? Did you want to sell those? Yeah they're, yeah, they're 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 definitely my sort of thing. I really like them, even in the condition they're in. Yeah, so it's just. Yeah, I like them. I think. I don't know. Is that? Is that it was copper? Yeah, copper top. Yeah. Yeah, they're a great shape. I like I like them. I like them. Can we see the other one, Chris? Yeah, sure. And is that the same grand? Oh, Strand Electric. Strand. There you go. Strand Electric Engineering Company. Yeah, they, they're good. I like everything about those, actually. Good. Bit of a task to get them restored, but we can do it. This one's done. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might have done that. <laughs> Strand Electric was founded in 1914 in the heart of London's West End. With significant restoration, these 1940s theatre spotlights could retail at around £800 for the pair. Would £100 buy them? I thought that's what you were going to say. Would £100 buy them? <laughs> well, I sell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was trying to be you then. Yeah. yeah. Finally, an item Drew wants to buy. But is the price right? Um, a hundred pound by him. I'm gonna take a bit of messing around. They're well seized as well. I don't want to be too hard on you. I'd say like 80 quid, 40 pound a piece. I'd be happy with that. You're happy with yeah. that? Deal, yeah. we'll take them. Oh, lovely. Nice one, thank you. Basically, what I bought is the shell. Everything else will have to be scrapped and, and all new innards put into them. Yeah, these are perfect. These are like me all over. They're just they're beaten up small and rusty. <laughs> <laughs> no hair. <laughs> Chris isn't a hoarder, he just doesn't throw anything away because he loves it all. And that look, because it's just one guy, one mind, doing one thing, uh, works. Well, look, thanks, Chris. Really? Yeah, yeah, nice good to, to meet, meet you. you. Yeah, Keep and up you? the good work, I love it. All of it, so easy. cool. Yeah, easy, I'll nice go. Yeah, and Take you? Thanks. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, guys. For me to be able to come here, meet Chris, see somebody who's being really inventive and just having fun and be able to buy something, all in all, a good day. We've got a lot of cool stuff. Cornwall has been good. The salvage hunters bid farewell to Cornwall and head home to Drew's base in North Wales, where the rest of the team are waiting to receive the new stock. You can't see anything. No. <laughs> there's loads in there. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, there's loads in there. we just got to pack it away. L small things, then? Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of these? Love them. Aren't they lovely? Absolutely love Ooh, them. Beautiful. 80 quid the pair. Even better. Even better. Yeah. Isn't that just that's, fab? That's one of the best I've ever seen. And it's fully adjustable all over everything. Wow. And the oh big God. knurled cogs on it. Love it. It was too good to leave. Yeah. But I got these as well, which aren't very old. Probably only 10 or 20 years old. Not even that. But good sizes. Right. Aren't they? Yep. I got seven of them for 100 quid. Oh, it's right. So, yeah. happy as Larry yeah. with those. And you know my liking for medical posters of oh. all types that you're not that keen on? No. No. Wait for this. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think? <laughs> Wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> we got some, some work for Drew. Yes, something for me to do. Is that all right now? Which is this. Which is a Georgian fan light. Drew, that's... Beautiful. It is, isn't it? It is. And unfortunately, I'm going to have to change the glass over because it's really quite complex. So it's a job for me. So it's going to be sat for a while. It is. Yeah, it's not going to get done. It's not going to get done. <laughs> <laughs> As predicted, it falls to Gavin to get started on the Georgian fan light. Well, Drew said he was going to do it, but uh, me knowing Drew as he is, it'll never get done, so I thought I'd do it myself. And don't tell him I said that. Replacing the glass is an exacting job. It 
it's now ready for Drew's inspection. That's not bad, actually, Gav. I thought I'd dip in to get it done. Oh, aye. That's great. Really good job. Pains me to say it, but yes, he has done a really good job. Lovely job. Let's get it in the shop. That'll be in the shop tomorrow. Pretty happy with it. Very happy. Great. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> nice work. Meanwhile, Ollie gets to work rewiring the machinist's lamp. which Rebecca photographs for the website. The lamp's turned out really well, actually. It's just a really good, strong item. Shouldn't be a problem at all trying to sell this one. The following day, Drew is back on the road, this time with his good friend T and his best friend Enzo. They're heading to T. Croy's on the island of Anglesey to visit a local collector and tractor enthusiast. What place of loveliness and rubble are you taking me today, then? This is just a standard house call for us. It's local. Right. Guy on Anglesey, Alan Kelly, collector of tractors. Well, I started collecting tractors in about 2000. We've drifted into steam as well, and oil engines, unimogs, and toys, basically. Big boys' toys. Farms, always good for one reason. They've got loads and loads of sheds, and they don't tend to throw things away. Well, it's, it's going to be a difficult day for me, cos uh, with Enzo being here, I'm not used to having two bosses with me. <laughs> Enzo I'm... is in charge. He does love a local house call, don't you, mate? Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, tractor. Old tractor, there we go. Oh, and he's got loads of doggies. Enzo's not going to like this at all. Oh, no. Oh, quite old doggies, so... Oh, he doesn't like that. No. I've never heard him make that noise before. No, shush. Stay. What did you do to them? I didn't dogs? do anything. <laughs> just, just Enzo just kicked off. <laughs> oh, it's another one. Alan. Hello. Drew, how are you doing? Hi, cheers. Hi. Hi. Molly, Hi. hello. How are you doing? Hi. Hello. We've come to see some stuff, I believe. You've got some sheds full of gear. We'd like yes. to have a look. Come on, Alan. Yeah. Have a look. It's nice to only be local. Yeah, it's not far from... First stop, there, Alan's tractor shed. How many tractors have you got in here, then? Oh, I suppose there's a hundred and plenty dotted around the place. That I like. That's a big butch tractor, isn't it, T? Man tractor. With collectors, it's often not the stuff that they think is valuable that interests me. I mean, I'm definitely not going to buy a tractor. But I'm sure in all this stuff somewhere I can find something for one of my clients. Uh, uh, Drew, this, this stop sign here... We've seen a couple of them on our travels with that. This is something I always buy. I always buy these. One of the things he had in the shed was an old stop-go sign. So it's a cast aluminium one, and the guy would stood next to the side of the road, you know, spin it, stop, go. But what this had was the small uh, glass uh, inserts in there, like what most people would call them, like a cat's eye. Have you got any to sell? No. Oh. No, oh, I'd rather <laughs> buy that one. Oh. I would struggle to get uh, to let that go, actually, because an, an old chap gave it me. Definitely not for sale. Definitely not for sale. Fair did enough. I nearly find something? You did find something. Yeah. You knew that I'd want that, didn't you? I did. Well, I did see it. Good. I've got two things that I've been given. I can't ever sell them. So I totally understand when Alan turns around and says, well, look, I was given it by an old chap. You go, OK, fine. Oh, now you're talking. There you go, T. Look at that. Unimog. He even says tractor. That's cool. That I like. I really want a Unimog. I've got no use whatsoever for one, um, but I want one. It's like the next step up from a, my off-road 90 Land Rover. What excuse did you come up with to buy that? <laughs> well, <laughs> I saw a job once I fancied in a field. Uh, <laughs> you drive that over your Land Rovers. It makes my Land Rover look pathetic, doesn't it, really? Yeah. This is a proper man's truck, isn't it? Man They're just superb-looking things and brilliantly engineered and daft, and I really want one. Well, we'll always accommodate him if he's got an inkling to buy a Unimog. We, we, we do like our toys, but we do part with them occasionally. Above the shed, Alan has a few more things he's keen to show Drew. These chairs are something I buy all the time, but not exactly this model. Yeah, these are the ones made in Colwyn Bay, or this fine, these are. Uh-huh. The quantity there's great, the condition's great. The colour's all right. The maker's mark on the back's local. That's quite nice. I've never bought this amount of spring ones before. Yeah, well, th these were designed for catching your posterior. 
you know. <laughs> A special Welsh one for the English yeah. market, basically. <laughs> like it's playing a joke on the English. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you got any more like this, but with the solid seats, particularly that amount? That'd be wonderful. The more, the merrier with these chairs. Mm, no, no, we haven't uh, no. at the moment. Normally, that would be a great find to find sort of 50 or 60 chairs that are all matching. They're not that comfortable, and they're also not very desirable at the moment. I've never been able to buy and sell any of them, to be honest with you. But yeah, no, not for me those. Yeah, no Nearly, problem. but not, not quite. It's a disappointment for Drew, but there are still more outbuildings to visit. Your collection of stuff is marvellous. Yeah. So where next now? Well, come and have a look in this shed here. For six. Ah, I see a theme. EY tractors. Yes, these are Anglesey tractors. Still, I'm still, I'm here to buy things though. I can't find anything to buy yet. Well, have you, what have you got? We've, we could put this ladder up, and you could come and have a look at a bit of timber upstairs. Okay. It's time for Drew to do what he does best and start rummaging in the loft. It's all tractor parts up here, isn't it? Well, we're we looking at is I, it in here? I believe the there's something there. underneath here. Oh my god. It looks as though Drew's gamble has paid off. Has he finally found his standout item? Yes. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes and no. no. What is it? It's a uh, sideboard, drinks cabinet, server, low cupboard, bottom half of a dresser. This, this is an earlier piece, and then the Victorians and Edwardians or whatever, somebody's carved over the top of it and sort of ruined it. See how it's very, very naive and not very well done. This carved sideboard is an example of brown furniture, a term which refers to heavy and dark wooden pieces from the Georgian and Victorian eras. And now, this is the stuff that's really fallen out of favour. I couldn't give it away. So this is, is an, a wholly original piece that someone's just recarved and wrecked, basically. Yeah. Even some Victorians yeah, yeah. decided but it, to... But, better. when, but you know, not being rude, Alan, when it yeah. was first made, it wasn't very good either. The time is right now to buy English furniture. There's never been cheaper. There's a lot of it on the market. People should be buying it, but buy the best stuff. This doesn't come into that category at all. Sorry, Alan. Never mind. Never mind, eh? Never mind. Next time. We'll, uh... Despite the disappointments, Alan's yard is filled with historical items. His 1912 steamroller is in full working order and presents a unique opportunity for Drew to see history in motion. Wow. Isn't that great? Have you seen what's written on the side of it, too? Molly. Nice. That's after you. Not every girl has a steam engine named no. after him, you know. That's quite something, that, you know. OK, so you're going to take this out for a run, then? We'll clamber up and have a go. You can be the, the pointer. Can... Oh, OK, cool. I'll be the gas man. <laughs> we'll bring it back. Lost without a sat nav, aren't you? <laughs> God, this is harder than it looks. <laughs> Slightly terrifying. The huge crankshaft that's exposed, and this thing is whizzing round at a couple of thousand RPM right in front of your face, and then there's the noise, and then it spits oil all over you. There we are. We'll, uh, we'll come back. <laughs> You're intoxicated or something. <laughs> Your driving's just... atrocious. <laughs> Oh, it's great fun. I think if I was coming to buy tractors and things off Alan, I think we'd have plenty of deals. Uh, but I'm looking for things I can sell through the shop. I can't find anything like that here today, but that's the way it goes. I mean, I will go on seven out of ten house calls and get nothing. And that's just the job. You've got to go to every single one. Unfortunately, today it didn't work out so well. But I did get to drive a steam engine and another good contact locally, which you can't beat. So that today it wasn't wasted really, it was just a day where we didn't buy anything. But the best thing for me is, I found somebody I'll sell stuff to. That's the way it goes, I suppose. And it ends. And you didn't even get out of the car, did you, buddy? No. Poor chap. He seems to have added an extra texture to the van. Is there an, you, there's an ambiance. An ambiance of Enzo, yeah. Ambiance. <laughs> With a new contact under their belt, Drew and T arrive home to report back to Rebecca. Oh, hey. Hello, dear. Hello, dearest. You all right? Yes. Hello. Hello, Mr T. Hello. How did it go? 
Lots in the van? No, nope, empty. There was just nothing at all to buy. Well, I've had a good day anyway. Have you sold some stuff? I've sold quite a bit, actually. Have you? Thank you very much. Have all... they paid? They've all paid. There we go. work here is done. You may leave. <laughs> 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 I'll go and make you a cup of tea because uh, I've got one at the moment. Drew has asked his daughter, Grace, to help out with the business over the summer holiday. And she's busy cleaning the metal letters from Cornwall. I don't know whether it's because Drew can't use computers or I'm just slightly better than him. But um, he wants me to come in and help out with the website. So why I've ended up cleaning, I don't know. Once clean, Drew shows Grace how to photograph them for the website. Can't think of any words you can use. Ah, I just thought of one. Posse. That's a good word. That's a good word. No. <laughs> Don't try and be cool, Drew. It doesn't work. God. Chopping the letters, chopping the background, strange angle. It's great. It's cool. Yeah. Well done. It's Drew's final trip of the week, and he's back out on the road with Gavin. They're heading to Bridgewater in Somerset for a slightly unusual salvage hunt. So, we're off to, uh, is it Brymore? Brymore School of Rural Technology. Brymore School of Rural Technology for boys. Brymore is a state boarding school with a long history. The main schoolhouse dates back over 800 years. Today, Drew will be meeting the school business manager, Linda, and her colleague, Lorraine. Drew might be interested in some of the items we've got. We've just done a refurbishment of schoolhouse and we've got some original pieces of furniture that he might like to look at. This is a school I would have liked to have gone to. At 13, first thing they're taught when they arrive, how to drive a tractor. It was full of boys. You went to school just for the girls? Uh, yeah, and to play football. <laughs> <laughs> Works nicely. Oh, yeah, yeah. When we pulled up outside, the school, the building is remarkable. It's such a mixture of, of styles. I've done lots and lots of school clearances. You always find something remarkable. Hello. Hello. Hi, Drew. Drew, how are you Welcome doing? Welcome to Brymore School. I'm Linda Binden, and this is Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine. Beautiful staircase. Lovely. Don't fall off. Linda leads Drew and Gavin into the basement, where some furniture pieces have been wrapped and stored. One of my favourite places. Well, these are quite interesting. Yes, that was up in School House in the corridor display cabinet. What I could see was the front, the sort of the, the, the top rail of this bookcase was in a very good quality burr oak. Is it complete? I believe so. I've got some other pieces here. Well, these parts are it. Ah, there's the doors. Good quality, though, astral glazed. Nothing at all. At the moment, it's just a collection of very good bits. What we tend to do when we find something like this is try and quickly place everything. Christmas morning. Aha! Starting to make sense. That's the corner of the door that goes over that. All of a sudden, just looking at the hinge location, it's like, oh, right, OK, that's how it fits together. So it's castellated like that. So it looks like a, the turrets of a castle, basically. Do you know what? I was really excited about it, and then I saw this sort of castellated thing, which I don't like. So I'm just trying to think if we can alter it. We'd have to alter the colour as well to make it saleable. We'd have to make it much, much lighter. Right. A lot lighter. But a big glazed bookcase, it's just an odd shape. It's been cut up quite badly. Um, oh yeah. Another disappointment. Well, no. No, it's still worth something. It's just a case of trying to work out just exactly how much. Do you have the key for it? Oh, no, I'm not sure that we do, but I can ask. <laughs> so we it's not all that. <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be bits missing. I think we may have some more pieces somewhere else in the school, so we can go and look there. I think we'd have to go and have a look at that as yeah, well, yeah, and then we'd come do. to a decision on the price. But at the moment, as a collection of parts, it's worth a couple of hundred pounds. Oh, it's different. Just don't like that. Anyway. The incomplete pieces are not enough to convince Drew. This sale now depends on finding the missing parts. I love old school stuff, but I can't see anything old enough. 
here? No. Just through here, we've got some bits of furniture that we've been storing. OK. Well, I haven't seen... I really like school furniture. Now, we've cleared whole schools. We've, we bought a whole school once. All of it. But we're always getting school stuff. Aha! These. That's the missing bits. Ah, right. So you can see the nice... Oh, right, I see now. We thought it was something else. Didn't yeah, we? I thought it might belong that to this one. That sits like that. Ah. We managed to find the sort of central shelf and the foot, the base piece, that the entire thing would sit on. So all of a sudden it starts to make sense and we've got it all. Do we want the hassle of this thing? I don't know. How easy is it to change the colour on? Um, it's a lot of work, isn't it? It's a lot of work. This 19th century bookcase is made from burr oak, which is both strong and durable. Restored, it's worth as much as £2,000. Um, I think my opinion is the same thing. I think I'd take it for a couple of hundred pounds or I'd leave it. Oh, difficult one. <laughs> oh, I don't know. What do you think? Is that anywhere near the mark? What are we going to do with it otherwise? It's just been in storage for two years. Hmm. And this is going to be Three demolished, years, this room. Actually. Yeah, yeah, so we do need to move it on. Oh, I don't know. 250? Yeah, 250 is fine. Thank you. Thanks. Deal. No, we'll have that. We'll have that. You're right, well, that one's light. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to carry either of them, to be frank. I know. <laughs> I bet this is the heavy bit. Oh, no. <laughs> it's nothing. Right, that's lovely. Thank you. Where's next, Linda? Um, should we go and have a look in the clock tower? Yeah, cool. There might be something interesting in there. All right. This is called the Muse Flats, and it's uh, the old stable blocks that were converted. So the boys live in here? Um, they will be in September gap students. Oh, okay. look at that. So... Oh, I like your staircase. Have <laughs> <laughs> you seen this? <laughs> is that really? <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. And uh, we've got a fireplace. It's been hidden up here for a while. It came out of the Muse Flats. I'm looking at this thing going, Am I really seeing what I'm looking at? Am I really looking at an 18th century pine chimney piece? Am I really? It's amazing to find something like this just lying around. It's incredible. <sighs> Looks like original paint and gilding on it as well. You got a rag, Gav? Anything will do. Yeah, go for it. So how long has it been up here? We're not sure, but the last person to have kind of seen it was about 15, 20 years ago, so... You don't have the tablet for the centre, do you? No, unfortunately, that was broken some time ago. There would have been sort of classical, neoclassical themes, really, and the tablet would have had something in it as well. Have you got any pictures of the school with it in situ? I have, actually. Shall I go and uh, please? I'd love them? to see. I'd love to see what the tablet did look like in the centre. Shame. Man. Hell of a thing. What a find. Still a very, very rare chimney piece, but that insert is super rare. It's not just a bit rare, it's ridiculously rare. You see the plaque was missing then. Ah, so that's it. That's it. Yeah. Cupid and Psyche. Even though it was damaged, no matter how damaged it was, it's fixable. Mm -hmm. And the specialists all over the country that could put that back together again and you'd never know. But that is a shame. So that would have just sat in there. Imagine how... Yeah, it would have looked lovely, wouldn't it? So is it for sale? Yes. It's been hidden away for, as we said, 20 years. It seems such a waste. Mm. This Georgian chimney piece is a unique find and, despite the missing plaque, could sell for around £800. It's a nice architectural feature, but it's incomplete. It's like a car missing the engine. It's a, it's a major problem. Such a shame. Oh dear, yeah. I've just got it is. I've just I'm just really struggling to get a value on it because it's buying it for the sake of buying it to save it and maybe get get it into somebody else. I think with the plaque in it would have been a couple of thousand minimum. Minimum. Minimum it would have been that. Um, I think as it stands it's four hundred quid. It's, it's a really nice relic, but I can't sell it straight away. And if I do end up selling it, I'm gonna have to sell it to an like a fireplace specialist dealer who will find a piece for it. So I'm taking a stab in the dark at that price. Well, I think we might sell it for 500, Joe. 
500 just, it, I know it's cheap, but it still just seems a bit much for something I'm not going to sell straight away. If we meet halfway, 450, I'll take it. Okay, we'll yeah. do it, yeah. Okay, wonderful, Thanks. thank you. Let's hope somebody else enjoys it. So it will do, it'll go from, through our hands, it will end up with somebody who's, who's going to restore it, who will have more knowledge on locating a central tablet for it. Good. It's really, really hard to value, so I just thought, what, what would I gamble? You know, if a guy turned up in the back of a van or it turned up at an auction house, what would I pay? And you go, well, 500 quid, you know. So I thought, well, always you go a little bit lower. We settled on 450 pounds. I now own a really, really beautiful item. OK, Gav, just careful, careful. Who's going back over the toilet step? Both of us. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, who's going backwards over really? the toilet step? Do I feel guilty from taking it from this building? No, not at all, because it was badly stored. One person slips on it, boom, it's gone, the gesso falls off, it gets stripped down for parts and skipped, it's lost. On every call you get, that you go to, you hope to find something exceptional. Today we've found, number one, something absolutely exceptional. Number two, a bit of a project, but with nothing missing. He's all right here, Kevin. So all in all, a very, very good day. Done. There you go, done. Thank you. Pleasure to meet both of you. Pleasure Thank to you meet so you. Much Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, what a beautiful place. It's lovely, isn't it? Isn't it? For a school. Someone I'd send my kids. They should have an antique school. Yeah. Drew Pritchard's Antique Restoration School. It's got legs. <laughs> Seriously, you could have your own little office there. <laughs> the trip to Somerset has been a success, and Drew and Gavin return to North Wales to show off their wares to the team back at base. Hello, hello, hello. How are you doing? How are you? <laughs> More stuff. Good. Good. Lots more stuff. This is very, very old. This is contemporary to the Georgian building that's there. Well spotted. Yeah. Well spotted. Yeah. One of the rarest and most interesting things I've found in it a long time. Just the originality of it is just mind blowing. And it's an inverted brake front bookcase, burr oak. I know it's a bit trad for us, but it's a good shape. And I thought we'd take a chance on it, because it wasn't a lot of money, because it needs quite a lot of work, and the colour's wrong. Can I give that to you, John? Left-hand side. Right-hand side, sorry. Drew has yet to see the bookcase assembled, so the team pitch in to put it back together. I paid, and it's the first time I've seen it together, so I'm really pleased, uh, £250. Goodbye. I know. To break down a week, to be able to go and buy an 18th century fireplace, uh, an, 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 an incredibly weird poster, shop letters and pieces of classical English furniture, all in one week in a beautiful location, I've really enjoyed it. I am well pleased with that. So, happy? Very well done, yeah. Mr Pritchard. Yeah.